Installation will require a Phillips head screwdriver, adjustable wrench, hammer, and a hammer drill with a 10 millimeter concrete bit and a 1 quarter inch concrete bit. Before beginning, familiarize yourself with the difference between a tower, a cabinet, the cameras, the targets, and the wheel clamps. After opening shipping crates, remove the front cover from each tower and remove components shipped inside the towers. Lift each tower out and place them sideways across the top of several wooden blocks. Please note that each aligner is installed and tested before shipping to ensure quality control. As such, certain areas may have slight signs of being previously assembled. Remove the four shroud screws on the plastic portion of the tower using a hand screwdriver. It is important that you do not use power or air tools to tighten any bolts and screws on the aligner, as this may cause damage. Remove the eight bolts from the top portion of the tower and insert it into the bottom portion until the bolt slots are aligned with the threaded inserts in the bottom portion of the tower. Slide the shroud up onto the top portion of the tower. Ensure that the upper portion of the tower is supported so that it cannot fall to the floor. Then insert the eight bolts that were removed in the previous step and tighten them by hand until snug. You will tighten them further in a later step. Once the top section bolts are in place, attach the base plate using the included bolts and stand the tower up. After the tower is stood up, carefully pull the cable bundle from the top section into the bottom section and unroll the bundle. Ensure that no cables are caught between the top and bottom section. Then ensure that the upper section is resting flat on the bottom section. If necessary, slightly loosen the bolts so that the upper section can rest flat. Then tighten eight bolts using a wrench. Plug the power cable into one of the three power plugs inside the bottom section of the tower. Plug the CAT5 cable into the Ethernet socket inside the bottom of the tower, and then connect the ground cable loop to the grounding bolt inside the bottom section of the tower. Attach the tower front cover with the included screws and reinstall the shroud screws, then repeat each previous step for the other tower. The distance between towers should be no more than 13 feet apart at the inside back anchor of the base plates. To make sure that the towers are centered, find the center line of the bay from the very front to the very back of the bay and snap a chalk line down the center of the bay. Go to the front of the bay and snap a chalk line all the way across the bay at 90 degrees from the center line. This cross line should be positioned where you intend to install the towers. Measure out from the center line on the cross line six and a half feet on each side and mark both sides. This will give you the location of the back inside anchors for both towers at 13 feet apart. Position both towers with the back inside hole over the marks. Using the hole of the base plate as your guide, drill the concrete with a 10 millimeter bit and install one anchor bolt The anchor bolt should have the nut screwed on the bolt before you drive it into the hole. Otherwise, it may drive too far in and the nut may not screw on. Leave the nut loose so that the tower can be rotated during a later step. Connect the CAT5 cables from the back of the cabinet to the socket on the back of the tower. And connect the power cable from the back of the cabinet to the socket on the back of the tower. Connect the monitor to the cabinet with the screws on the back of the monitor. Connect the video cable and power cable to the monitor. Please note that the specific video cable used may vary depending on the line of model. Plug in and power on the cabinet, power on the UPS, power on the computer, and then power on the towers. 
Once the computer finishes powering on, open the aligner software. And on the main menu, select Settings. And then select Diagnostics. Drive a vehicle into the bay and center it on the center line of the bay with the front axle parallel to the back anchors. For this process, use vehicles with similar axle widths as vehicles you will be aligning. Locate the front axle 9 feet from the base of the towers and ensure that the steering wheel is straight. Park a second vehicle behind the first, making sure that it is centered on the center line of the bay and position the rear axle of the second vehicle 50 feet back from the front axle of the first vehicle. Attach the T2 targets to the rear axle of the rear vehicle and the T1 targets to the front axle of the front vehicle. Rotate all four target faces towards the camera towers. Select the FL front left option and uncheck the Auto Region box and select the On box. Go to the driver's side tower and rotate it until you can see the T1L target on the front vehicle in the large black window. If you are unsure that it is the correct target, have someone put their hand in front of the target. You should see their hand in front of the target on the screen. Rotate the tower so that the T1L target is in the lower right side of the frame with approximately one target's width between the target and the blue frame. When finished with the front left camera, select the RL or rear left option, uncheck the auto region box and select the on box. Rotate the tower so that the T2L target is in the top left side of the frame with approximately one target's width between the target and the blue frame. This should be the target on the driver's side rear vehicle rear axle. Now recheck the front left target position. When both targets are positioned correctly at the same time, continue to the next step. Duplicate this process on the right side tower using the right front T1R and the right rear T2R target on the diagnostic screen. The right front target should be in the lower left side of the frame with approximately one target's width between the target and the blue frame. The right rear target should be in the top right side of the frame with approximately one target's width between the target and the blue frame. When both targets are positioned correctly at the same time, continue to the next step. Once you have adjusted the towers, shim each tower plumb if necessary, and recheck camera positions. If you need to shim a tower to make it plumb, carefully shim and recheck the camera view before the final anchoring process. You can now finish anchoring the base plates down. Be careful not to move the base plate while installing the remaining three anchors. Tighten them down with a wrench. If you are setting the aligner up as a drive-through bay, you must install the protective cable drive-overs between the towers. Make sure that you do not pinch any of the cables and drill one quarter inch holes using the drive-overs as a guide and install the included hammer anchors. During initial setup, it is necessary to perform a correspondence calibration and a horizon calibration. It is important that all other calibrations have been performed before shipment. Do not perform any other calibrations unless directed to do so by an authorized service technician. Unauthorized calibration is not covered by warranty. Go to the settings page in the aligner program and select the service option on the right and then select the calibrations tab at the bottom of the screen. Select the FL-FR Correspondence Calibration, and then select the Calibrate button. 
Use the center line marked during installation for a reference and set up the calibration fixture with both T1 targets. Center the calibration bar between the towers and approximately 10 feet from the front of the towers. T1L on the left driver's side and T1R on the right passenger side. The screen will show several reference distances during the calibration process. Each of these distances is referenced from your starting position. Each target should start the same distance from the tower. This is referenced as one foot on screen. The actual starting distance from the towers will be approximately 10 feet. Rotate each target until the screen shows an approximate angle of negative 50 degrees on each side. The closer to negative 50 that the targets are, the better results will be. Tighten the target knobs and select F2 to continue. When the calibration reaches step 2, rotate the calibration bar until the targets reach positive 50 degrees and press F2 to continue. It is important that you do not loosen or rotate the individual targets for this step or any step after step 1 of the calibration. Rotate only the calibration bar. When the calibration reaches step 3, move the right side of the calibration bar back one foot and leave the left side in place. Rotate the calibration bar until the target reads negative 50 degrees and press F2 to continue. During some steps, one side may be slightly higher and one side may be slightly lower than the target number. Do not adjust individual targets. Split the difference within the green sidebar and rotate only the calibration bar. When the calibration reaches step 4, rotate the calibration bar until the targets read positive 50 degrees and press F2 to continue. When the calibration reaches step 5, return the right side of the calibration bar to its starting position and move the left side back one foot. Rotate the calibration bar until the targets read negative 50 degrees and press F2 to continue. When the calibration reaches step 6, rotate the calibration bar until the targets read positive 50 degrees and press F2 to continue. A green exclamation symbol will appear if a good calibration result is detected. Press F2 to save the results. If a red exclamation point is displayed, select F4 to cancel and then repeat the calibration. After finishing the correspondent calibration, you will be returned to the Select Calibration screen. Select Horizon Calibration from the list on the left, and then select the Calibrate button on the right. Place the T4 targets on the calibration bar, T4L on the left, driver's side, and T4R on the right, passenger side, approximately 10 feet from the tower. Rotate each target until the screen shows an approximate angle of negative 50 degrees on each side. The closer to negative 50 that the targets are, the better results will be. Tighten the target knobs and select F2 to continue. When the calibration reaches step 2, rotate the calibration bar until the targets read positive 50 degrees and press F2 to continue. It is important that you do not loosen or rotate the individual targets for this step or any step after step 1 of the calibration. Rotate only the calibration bar. When the calibration reaches step 3, move the calibration fixture back approximately 7 feet until the cameras can see the targets. Center the calibration fixture. Rotate the calibration bar until the targets read negative 50 degrees and press F2 to continue. When the calibration reaches step 4, 
Rotate the calibration bar until the target speed positive 50 degrees and press F2 to continue. When the calibration reaches step 5, move the calibration fixture forward to the starting position and reverse the calibration fixture 180 degrees. The T4L target should now be on the right and the T4R target should now be on the left. Do not adjust or switch target positions on the bar. Rotate the calibration bar until the targets read negative 50 degrees and press F2 to continue. When the calibration reaches step 6, rotate the calibration bar until the targets read positive 50 degrees and press F2 to continue. When the calibration reaches step 7, move the calibration fixture back approximately 7 feet until the cameras can see the targets. Rotate the calibration bar until the targets read negative 50 degrees and press F2 to continue. When the calibration reaches step 8, rotate the calibration bar until the targets read positive 50 degrees and press F2 to continue. Leave the default options in the horizon measurement screen and press F2. When the results are displayed, press F2 to save the results. You will be returned to the calibration select screen. Choose back to main menu.